So today I wanted to talk about uh, brushes in Blender and Grease Pencil. So the default brushes uh, in Blender and Grease Pencil are fine to begin with, but if you want to create something that is a little bit more unique, you need to create your own. Um, in other drawing programs, there are lots of brushes that you can download either for free or you can buy them. Uh, but so far, I haven't really found any that uh, give me the look that I want. Uh, and for me, I want to try and mimic uh, the style of drawing that I do in Clip Studio. So in order to do this, I created my own. So it's pretty easy to do as long as you know a couple of key pieces of information that don't seem to be particularly easy to find. The settings for a brush in Blender are split between the material properties and the brush settings. But the place to start when creating a brush is in the material properties. Uh, in the material properties section, you'll see uh, another section, a subsection called surface. And this is where you can find the settings for the stroke and the fill of your brush. So the stroke refers to the line that your brush makes and the fill refers to what's inside a closed or partially closed shape. Your brush can have one or both settings, but we'll just be looking at the stroke setting today. Um, the line type can be either a line, dots or squares, but this is mostly going to be set to the line setting, but feel free to experiment with this. The style of the line is where we can really change things significantly. And you can select here between a solid line or a textured line. Now, if you select texture, it gives you a new option uh, to select an image to use. And this image is going to be the texture of your new brush. Now, Blender doesn't really give you any information about what that image needs to be. For example, what size, shape and resolution. So let me show you what I use and why that seems to make a difference. Now. If you select an image that is a, a circle or square, which you know makes a lot of sense, Blender will create a dashed line, which isn't always desirable. So that means that there are gaps between the images along the line that you draw. Now, it may be that that's exactly what you want, but for me, I wanted to create a solid line, and that's mostly what I want to create when I'm making new brushes. So that means that you need to use an image that is wider than it is tall. It doesn't seem to matter too much how wide it is, it works at around 1,000 pixels wide by 700 pixels high, and it also works at around 2,000 pixels wide by 700 pixels high. Uh, the main difference is how stretched the image will be on your line, and this can be adjusted using the UV factor setting. Now, that number that I chose for the height of the image doesn't really matter too much. It's probably good if it's uh, around 1,000 pixels, but play around with it. Um, it may not matter too much. Now, Remember to export your image as a PNG file with a transparent background. This is especially important for brushes like this example that are partially transparent within the image. So once you have your image selected in the stroke settings, uh, you can play around with the UV factor to change the texture size along the stroke. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to scale automatically when you scale up your brush size. So one way to deal with this is to create multiple brushes with different UV settings if you're planning on drawing with very different brush sizes. And that's really all there is to it. So once you've imported your image, applied it to your brush, um, that is your new brush now that you can use in Blender and Grease Pencil uh, to animate and to draw.